Hey what is up everyone I hope all of you are doing great and in today's question we have a uniform cylinder of radius r rolling with a velocity u on a horizontal flow collides elastically with another identical cylinder kept at rest parallel to the former one uh, coefficient of friction between a cylinder and the floor is mu no friction acts between the cylinders during the collision and acceleration of free fall is g fine uh, find separation between the cylinders when relative acceleration between the centers vanishes okay fine easy question so what do we have here first uh, let me tell you that i have considered that the mass of the cylinder is m and the moment of inertia is m r square by 2 okay uh, so initially the first cylinder i have marked it as 1 is moving is rolling actually so with a speed of the center of mass u so angular velocity would be u by r second cylinder marked as 2 was at rest just after collision okay just after collision the momentum the linear momentum will be transferred to the second cylinder so the velocity that was u initially of the first one would be totally converted to the second one of course the rotational kinetic energy of the first one won't uh, face any changes just after the collision and of course th after the collision the second one won't start to rotate okay uh, it, i mean it will initially gradually its angular velocity will increase later on but uh, just after collision it won't have any angular velocity right so this is just the before and after situation i hope there's no doubt with this one so few points you need to remember that momentum will be conserved of course while conserving linear momentum you should work with the velocity of the center of masses first cylinder maintains its angular velocity after collision as i have already said and the second cylinder doesn't gain any angular velocity just after collision okay fine so the moment when the relative accelerations of center of mass vanishes so in our question they have asked that find out the separation between the cylinders when relative acceleration between the centers vanishes okay so just after collision the situation was something like this right so this cylinder was only having the angular velocity part whereas its linear velocity part totally vanished because it was totally converted to totally transferred to the second cylinder so this point this bottommost point which is in contact with the surface have a tendency to move towards left so the stat is the kinetic friction will start to act towards right that is mu mg okay similarly for the second one the whole cylinder have only translational kinetic energy or each and every point is trying to move towards right with a velocity u so the point this contact point have a velocity u towards right so the kinetic friction would act towards left right so after some time when both the cylinders will start to move in a pure rolling motion right and at that time only friction the kinetic friction acting on both the cylinders will be zero that means after that uh, the con contact point will be at relative rest with the ground right so actually we need to find out this distance this separation this separation in question they have asked to us to find out this separation when both the cylinders will start to move in a pure rolling motion because at that time only the acceleration the relative acceleration will be zero because they are both the acceleration of uh, acceleration of both the cylinders will be zero so relative acceleration will also be zero so just when the two cylinders will start to move in a pure uh, start to roll simultaneously at that instant this separation is needed okay uh, so this is what we need to find out so this will be our required situation now first we will find out v1 okay so initially the cylinder number 1 
was having only angular velocity in the clockwise direction force is acting towards right this force will create an anti clockwise torque ok. Uh, of course, this force will also try to increase the velocity of the center of mass. So, center of mass velocity will increase angular velocity will decrease there will be after some time the velocity and the angular velocity will get synchronized in such a way that it will be v 1 and this angular velocity would be v 1 by r ok. So, v 1 is equal to initial velocity was 0 acceleration was mu m g by m that is mu g times t. So, the time taken is this one. So, from this situation to this situation time taken by the cylinder is this one. Initial angular velocity is u by r final angular velocity is v 1 by r. So, actually this person is creating an anti clockwise torque trying to decrease this one. So, this one decreases to this one after time t ok. So, final angular velocity initial angular velocity angular acceleration alpha which is nothing but torque that is mu m g r divided by m r square by 2. So, this 2 uh, jumps in the to the numerator after solving we get v 1 equals to u by 3. Uh, if you put the value of v 1 here you get the time as u by 3 mu g ok. So, we got the time we got the final speed uh, I could have also solved this one by conserving angular momentum by uh, but I did not do that because this process uh, is approachable by most of the students. Uh, now finding v 2 similarly for the second cylinder <coughs> initial velocity is u no angular velocity a torque uh, sorry a force is acting towards left at the contact point this will create a clockwise torque trying to increase the angular velocity from 0 to v 2 by r and this will decrease the value of u from u to v 2. Some point of time there will be v 2 equal the linear velocity will be v 2 angular velocity would be v 2 by r right. So, v 2 equals to initial velocity minus mu g t. So, time taken is this one final angular velocity equals to initial angular velocity which is 0 plus torque times t. So, just put the value of t here solve it you get v 2 equals to 2 by 3 u put the value of v 2 in the equation of t you get u by 3 mu g which is uh, of course absolutely you will get these two times equal right because the accelerations are same masses are same. So, both the time intervals will be same. Now, what happens just after collision I am drawing the situation once again to summarize what we have studied till now that first cylinder just after collision will possess only the angular velocity no linear velocity because it has been totally transferred to the second one right acceleration of the first one is acting towards right acceleration of the second one is acting towards left. So, displacement done by the second cylinder is final speed square v square equals to u square plus 2 a s actually a not plus 2 a s here it will be minus because acceleration is towards left against the motion. So, just put the value of v 2 that we have got in our previous slides uh, just put the value we got the displacement is 5 by 18 u square by mu g towards right. Similarly, for the 1 v final velocity square equals to 0 square plus 2 mu g s 1. So, calculating we got s 1 equals u square by 18 mu g ok. So, the separation between the two cylinders when that required situation has been achieved would be the difference of their two individual velocities with respect to ground ok. So, after calculating and reducing it to its simplest form we got the separation between the two cylinders as 2 by 9 u square by mu g ok. Uh, I know this video was a bit lengthier, but uh, solution was pretty easy. So, I hope you all have found this video helpful and informative if you are new to this channel you should subscribe because here you will be getting a lot of numericals relevant for your JE advanced. 
and if you like the video give a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one peace